Hello everyone, my name is Dennis Bell. I played in the NBA with the New York Knicks, and now I'm the president of Recreational Debut, a nonprofit organization that helps young student athletes obtain athletic scholarships. We're so excited this year to be able to run three showcases throughout the Midwest. The first one is gonna be March 25th, which is Sunday, in Grand Rapids, Michigan. Number two will be April 7th, that'll be on a Saturday in Cincinnati, Ohio, and April 15th in Nashville, Tennessee on Sunday. It is going to be an exciting time, and I hope that you can attend. To learn more about the showcases, go to www.recdebut.org. Now I want to introduce a good friend of mine. He teamed up with Irvin Magic Johnson to give Michigan State its first NC2A championship. He was an All-American and an academic All-American at Michigan State, and he was a first-round draft choice of the Detroit Pistons. He is now one of the top broadcasters with ESPN, the Big Ten Network, and the Detroit Pistons. He is our special consultant, and here's a speech that he did at our last showcase. So let me introduce Gregory Special K. Kelsey. I want to talk to you about maybe shooting there's something substantial on that video. You know, everybody can say that they want to play. But my question to you then is, really, how bad do you want? How bad do you want? Are you willing to work hard? Are you willing to work extra hard? Are you willing to go beyond what is considered good enough? You know, I hear people say all the time to me, you know, the athletes are different today. You know, they don't work that hard. They expect things to be given to them. Well, nothing's going to be given to you. That's one thing that has not changed. If you want it, you've got to go after it. you got to go after everything that you have. I don't care how good you are. You have to always try to get better. Because someone is always chasing. Someone is always catching up. If you don't have that attitude, if you don't have that attitude on a consistent basis, you too will get passed up. You know, when I played at Michigan State University, I was one of the best players in the country. But guess what? Some might have said I wasn't the best on my own team. Because I played with a guy who was arguably one of the best basketball players to ever play. Urban Magic Johnson, but you know what? I love that because it makes me want to work harder to get better and get better. While he was my teammate, and I loved him as a teammate, he was also my top competition. And I think it's wonderful when you've got competition amongst teammates. Not jealousy, but competition. Because if I'm competing and I'm striving to get better and better and to become as good as he is or as better, if I achieve that, then we're going to be better as a team. And that was the ultimate goal. And that's why no one I've worked up, my college coach, John Heathcote, used to say, my job is easy because my two best players are also my two hardest workers. It would have been very easy for either one of us to sit back and rest on our arms pat ourselves on the back because we were both all American. But if we had done that, I don't think we would have reached our pinnacle of success that we achieved. And that was leading our team to a national championship. Now Michigan State won a national championship in the year 2000 with, you know, the guys from Clinton, Steve Cleaves, and Charlotte Bell, and Morris Peterson, Tom Rizzo doing a great job. But Michigan State's first national championship was in 79. With a group of players that were equally as talented, but were very, very hard workers, understanding the importance of it. Now, when we got to the NBA, my teammate Irvin Matthew Johnson was the first player to play. David Greenwood from UCLA was the second player in Bill Cartwright from the University of San Francisco was the third player selected by the New York Knicks. I was the fourth player selected. How many teams, how many teams will have 
Chicago. Two of the first four players taken in the draft doesn't happen all. The point I make though is, if you work hard, if you work really, really hard and you want it bad enough, good things can happen for you. Once we got to the NBA, we didn't stop working. We kept putting in the time to get better and better. Unfortunately for me, I had a knee injury that shortened my career to just six years. But my teammate went on to become one of the best players ever and a five-time NBA champion and an Olympic gold medalist. Why? Because he kept working. His goal to be the best kept pushing him to go beyond good enough. So whenever he or I and in front of youngsters like yourself, we always push that idea of working hard, putting in the time, going the extra mile, as if you want it bad enough. The second point that I like to demonstrate is that it's okay, and I certainly urge all of you to go after your dreams, your athletic dreams. Work as hard as you possibly can to be the best athlete you can be. You ain't all the time as you can, but you've got to balance it all. You have to balance it. How do you balance it? Make sure that the same effort that you're putting into the sport, you're putting into the classroom. I mentioned that my NBA career lasted six years. I would love for it to have lasted 12 years, 15 years. But the six years that I played in the NBA is six years more than most. Now, at the age of 28, if I had not gotten an education, I would have been in a world of trouble. For a lot of kids, they find that world of trouble much earlier because they don't get any years in the NBA. My point is, make sure while you're chasing your athletic dreams that you're also developing your scholastic program as well. Because ultimately, that is the thing that's going to carry you apart. That's the thing that's going to sustain you the most. The thing I wanted to do when I finished playing basketball was work in television. I wanted to be a broadcaster. I wanted to be a professional broadcaster. This doesn't happen without an education. This doesn't happen without me putting the same hard work in the classroom that I put on the court. Dennis Bell mentioned that I was an academic all American. Yes, I was. Very proud of that. But I wasn't an academic all American because I was so much smarter than anybody else. I was an academic all American because I understood my parents helped me understand just how important my education would be. And I understood how to manage time. Putting time on the court, putting time in the classroom. I'm so glad that I understood that and I'm so glad that I had that attitude and I was able to sustain it because when my career was over in the NBA after six years, I was not nervous about anything. I knew that I had the capacity to do something else. For me, I played professional basketball for six years. I have now been a professional broadcaster for 26 years. So when you look at that, you tell me, you tell me, what can you rely on most? Your athletics? No. Your education? Absolutely. That's the thing that's going to sustain you. That's the thing that you're going to be able to fall back on. And that's the thing that you're going to be that you that you're going to be able to rely on. So today, enjoy your basketball. Play hard. Compete. Have fun. Tomorrow, when you go to class, take a new attitude in there with you. And understand that it's your future that you're working on. And it's important that you understand just how critical that aspect of your life is and will continue to be. I know these are things that your parents have stressed to you all the time. 
I'm just repeating what they've always said. You've been hearing from the different book. But I'm also telling you that you can trust them. Get your education. Get it. It is absolutely critical. The basketball, the football, the baseball, the hockey, the golf, the tennis, the swimming, the lacrosse. What else? Bingo. What else? The soccer, what? The gymnastics. The track. The cheerleading. The volleyball. Those are all privileges. Those are privileges. You don't have to have them. If they go away, they go away. But your education is essential. You cannot do without it. So I urge all of you to get yours. Get yours. So that whenever the time comes for you to step aside from your sport, you will have no worries because you will be able to do something else. That's my message. Enjoy your basketball. Man, let's give it up, man. That was, woo! Wow.